viewers, welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Adeola Fayong. Uh, right now, there's a series on Netflix called Orange is the New Black. It's very, very popular right now. And the writer of the book that later became a series on Netflix by Pakaman talked about a federal case here in the U.S. dating back to 1994 uh, about her involvement in drug smuggling and money laundry. And most of the 14 defendants arrested were convicted long ago, except for the ringleader who is known by the mission. Uh, now, there has been speculations that this ringleader, Alaji, is actually a Nigerian politician by the name Prince Buruji Kashamu. Now, on his part, uh, uh, Mr. Kashamu, who is a PDP leader in Southwest as well as a newly elected senator, has denied being the drug lord, saying that it was his brother by the name Alaji who is now lead. Now, today on Sahara TV, we have the privilege of hearing from Mr. Kashamu himself what he has to say about this case. Uh, Mr. Kashamu, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Um, come in. Uh, go ahead. Looks like you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. But I must start by saying that Sahara reporters have not been here to me. Okay. In this reportage of issue concerning me, I have often wondered what has happened to the journalism tenet of fairness and objectivity. Mm. However, I decided to honor this interview request out of my respect for the media as the voice of the oppressed and the fact that I have got, it, I have got nothing to hide. Mm. Now, as the issue that you've raised, my problem is very simple. I do not know, I am not aware of any orange book or if there's any book that has been written in respect of orange book. The only thing that I can tell you on the issue of the U.S., I've, I've done a lot of things to clear my name. Mm. I spent four years in detention at the beds of the U.S. authority to prove my innocence before I was eventually exonerated. This was also in the presence of the U.S. prosecutors and other agencies of various governments like Nigeria, Benin Republic. I was after, it was after a rigorous trial with oral and documentary evidence that I was discharged. Mm. I'm in Nigeria. I am not running for my fatherland. If anyone thinks he has a case against me, let him follow due process and we will take it up from there. I am not under any obligation to go to the U.S. to answer the same charges after the two judgments of the British court exonerated me of the same allegation. Asking me to take the next available flight to the U.S. so as to clear my name is like asking me to jump into a fire that the Almighty Allah rescue, rescue me from. If the U.S. prosecutor could hide important evidence that later exonerated me in the U.K. court, only God knows what they would do in their own country. I see. Um, I can tell you, mm -hmm. I'm coming, please. I can tell you in a very simple way. I have never in my life put my foot into the United States. I have never demanded for their visa. I've been a businessman right from 18 years. When I was 18 years old, up to today, I continue doing my business. My last solution to you, I knew nothing about whatever they are saying over there. They brought the case to London, and I've won the case in London. I've cleared my name, cleared myself in London. My own side, I believe that's the end of the matter. If anybody believes that they have any other case against me, 
let them come through the due process. I am ready to challenge. I'm ready to face it without any problem. That's the end of the of the, of the response. Thank you so much, by the way, and I really appreciate you clearing the air because. Um, that's one of the reasons why we have you on the program today is to give you the opportunity, you know, to clear the air, to hear from your side, your side of the story. And I appreciate the fact that you've already uh, talked to us a little bit. And just for more clarification, especially, uh, especially for our viewers, you've said it several times that it was not you, that it was your brother, Alaji. Do you mind telling us a little bit about your brother, Alaji? Uh, what I can tell you, I've, um, I've told you my view. Uh, the American, the American case, I believe that they themselves, they are well aware of all what they have done, and they are well aware of the person that involved in the case. The reason why I'm saying this, in the first judgment, which, which was delivered in 2000, in 2000, in 2000, the first judgment that was delivered in 2000, if I could remember, if I could remember, the, the judgment was clear, you know, and that judgment, that judgment, the first is the English High Court of Justice, King Bench Division. It is, it is in its judgment of January 2000, in which it said the U.S. prosecutor actually knew that I am, I am an innocent when they suppress evidence of an identification parade, in which the ringleader of the gang that allegedly confessed that they had a West African League called allergy, said that I was not, the person said that I was not the man involved with them. I'm not the sure you heard my call. question, sir. I was asking I'm about coming, your I'm brother. Coming, I'm, coming, I'm, coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. If the person can clearly state it, that this is not the person that they are looking for, the only person that I know that yes, involved in many things that was in, Af in, Af in America was my brother, which of course, I don't want to catch up on allergy. The Interpol, they were aware of this. The NDLA in Nigeria, they were aware of this. They went to his office, his office that was using in Lagos, the, the, the office belonged to Remy Adiku. They sealed everything up. They were well aware of all this, and that is why the Interpol went up to London and give evidence, and the NDLA went up to London and give evidence. So far, that has been clear. And in a report of Interpol issue, the Interpol that investigated this matter around 2008, it was clear that the report, there's a clause of that Interpol that it went on saying, FBI of the report that all our letters written to Interpol in London, Lyon, Washington, and Kutonu relating to inquiry on criminal drug conviction record of the suspect were returned negative. I see. Um, I do not have nothing to do with this. If they are looking for my brother, they know where to look for my brother. They know how to get my brother. Uh, the proof, the telephone number they are talking, they are talking about in question mm -hmm. was my telephone was the telephone of my brother, which they have the record, the account. While I was in prison, my brother continued to do transaction and they were transferring money into my brother's account over two million dollars, which the Interpol took all this account, all these documents from Kutonu and give and use it in London in British court as an evidence. I see. So once again, you didn't really answer my question, sir. I was asking if you can tell us about your brother and especially how he died. You, my brother did not die. My brother is still at life. My brother did not die. He didn't die. They proof it in the judgment. If you have the two judgments in your hand, go through the judgment and you will see that the last judgment did declare that my brother did not die. My brother is at life. 
I don't see him, but he's at flight. My brother did not die. And where is he right now? How would I, how would I know? When I don't have nothing has anyone to do ever with met him, this, Has anyone ever met okay. this brother of yours? Everybody knows him. Who does not know him? They know him very well. He was living in Kutonu. He was moving around. I see. All right, uh, let's yes. move on to my next question, sir. Do you right now have any case, any pending case with the U.S.? Um, are you wanted in the U.S. or not? No, you, you see, that kind of question you're asking me, it is unfair. Let me tell you, if I have won a case, if I won a case in London mm -hmm. and extradition, I won it twice in London, the U.S. government did not appeal. Since 2003 up to now, that's about almost 11, 12 years. Mm -hmm. My sister, it is normal. If the U.S. government decided to not drop the case in the U.S., because I could remember that after I won the case in London, there was some certain amount that was paid to me. I then moved on. I instructed a lawyer to sue the U.S. government in the U.S. As soon as they did that, they started the litigation. Then they came out. We, we discovered that they had the case in the U.S. They did not drop that case. And that is why maybe after some years, I instructed a U.S. lawyer to attack the indictment that so far the case has been won in Britain and the warrant in question has been cancelled. Then there's no reason the indictment will still be there. And that is what brought the law that's what brought me to insult I insulted the lawyer and the lawyer attacked the indictment over there. It so is normal. The US has dropped the case, is that what you're saying? Yes, I attacked the case in order for them to drop the case, to cancel the indictment, because my name did not show on the indictment. I'm not the lady they're talking about. I don't have nothing to do with Mecca. I've never gone to Mecca before in my life. So I don't, my name is Prince. I don't bear any allergy. So there's no way they will link allergy with my name. I see. And can I tell you something, mm -hmm. my sister? I do not even know the kind of language, the kind of language that they think that I can that I can be speaking because the truth of the matter I do not understand the accent the accent or the way the US people speak. If they are talking about now to tomorrow now, I can never I can never understand. Anybody who wants to have a relationship or who wants to have a business with somebody must know what the person wants to discuss about. I've been a businessman since 18 and a half years old. Up to today, I still continue to run my business. This is what I believe on. I see. I have never in my life involved in any nonsense business. I've never involved myself in any business mm -hmm. that is not covered by rule of law. So I just wanted to be clear on that, nothing. that the U.S. has cleared you. That's what you're saying, right? I just wanted that to be clear. You are not wanted in the U.S. You've been cleared. If you, if, if you have, if you yourself, you have the, all the, all the, all the processes. Mm -hmm. yeah. you have, if you yourself, you have all the documents of all what has transpired in Britain. You don't need anybody to tell you before you yourself. You I, I understand that, sir, but can you that just that please clarify that? I just want you to clarify the fact that you are not wanted in the U.S., that you are clear. I just wanted to get that from you. Right from the time that I won, the fact that I won the case twice, mm -hmm. that the case was declared in, in, in British court that it is mistaken of identity. Mm -hmm. The case that took me four years, I went to court over 77 times. The fact that I won the case and they care me over there, I'm not a wanted person and I'm not a fugitive. I see. The U.S. The U.S. The U.S. judge in the in the first judgment also made it clear that I've never been in the U.S. in my life. I've never set my foot in U.S. But I'm not a fugitive. What many people does not understand 
Anybody that you want to request for, you want to ask for their extradition has to be a fugitive. I am not a fugitive. I have been arrested in London. They have tried me in London and they have discharged me in London. I am not a fugitive. I see. Uh, thank you for clarifying the fact that uh, you said that you are not wanted in the U.S. And the reason I wanted you to clarify that is because I personally contacted the U.S. Department of Justice in Illinois uh, in January of last year just to make sure that you are in it cleared. However, after speaking with a lawyer by the name Randall Sambon, who is the public information officer for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago, he told me that there is still a warrant for your arrest in the U.S. and that the case remains pending. So it looks like you believe you are cleared, but the U.S. Uh, uh, Department of State is telling me something different. They are saying that you are wanted, not your brother, but you. What do you have to say to that? I, I cannot, I cannot there's no way they can say that I'm wanted. You are the one that But they the did. They did. I have so it no, in written as well as audio. They can say whatever they want to say. If you send me, if you send me an email, I will scan, I will scan some documents, especially a, 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 a letter, a letter from the German, German, German embassy, where they themselves, they confirm that the U.S. police has dropped has dropped the international warrant. I will send you the copy today. So if they are saying that they still have a case pending in the U.S., I've told you earlier that they can do whatever they want. For example, let's say somebody in the or they carry somebody, uh, maybe for example, they suspect somebody and they carry the person to court here in Nigeria. If the person is not in Nigeria, if they are in another country, it is they can Nigeria, Nigerian police and they can decide on their own to keep the to keep the to keep the case until uh -huh. the person will be there. If I see. they are the one that brought a case to British to British court and arrested me and prosecuted me for good four years. Then I won the case. If they don't, if they decided to not drop the case in their country, what am I going to do? Which power do I have? Which power do I have? I see. So if, if I won the case, why would the U.S. be after you, though? Why would the U? I mean, you're not the only Nigerian. Why would the U.S. Uh, single-handedly pick you out? And because you, the way you're talking now, you're saying that they're just coming after you, trying to destroy you, uh, sort of a thing. Why would they pick you out and just come after you? Please, 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 you've seen a lot of people, many people that whom they have arrested by mistaking of identity. You've seen a lot of people who are involved in many things that they arrest them, but at the end of the day, they will find out that they knew nothing about this matter. British court, British court is, a, is one of the best court in the whole world. If they arrested me, they issue a warrant. And I fought this case for good four years. What test do you want me to do after they have exonerated me? Am I the one to go and tell the America, uh, yes, drop your case over there, don't drop your case over there? I don't know what you are asking me. If you ask me a question that whereby I was arrested, I did not run, I stood for good four years to fight the case, and I was exonerated. What test do you want me to do? Now, people are down saying, if the U.S. government is having a case, my dear, there's a due process in Nigeria. I am not running away. I'm a public figure in Nigeria. If they, if they are sure that they are having a case, there's a due process to follow. I am not running. That's only what I want to tell you. I've never involved in any dirty business in my life. I've always been a businessman. And I've cleared myself all over and all over. If anybody believes that he's having a case against me, let them come through the due process. I'm not running away. I we see. will battle it and fight it. I do mm. not have nothing to do in the US, and there's no way somebody will tell me one somebody will tell me that yes, buy today and go to the US. To go and do what the US. If anybody is having a case that they are sure I, that they are having a case. Let them come through the due process. So I just wanted to be clear on the fact that you not coming to the U.S. for uh, a very long time. You're actually saying you've never been to the U.S. Uh, you're saying it has nothing to do with uh, the case that is going on. It's just that you don't like coming to the U.S. despite the fact that you well-traveled. You go to so many parts of the world. If you, 
if you yourself, if you yourself, if you yourself, let me let me tell you this now. Let's say, for example, uh, God forbid, you are pregnant and you have uh, you have a lot of uh, complications, and at the end of the day, God saved you from that complication, okay, which you are not expecting to have. Can you tell your God to return that complication back to you? That is what you should use it to judge yourself. If you can tell your God that saved you from a death that you knew nothing, if you can tell your God to return you back to that complication, that would be my answer to you. I see. Um, my last question is that, um, having said that you are not wanted and all that, it looks like you're making a lot of effort uh, because you've continued to hire lawyers to tell the U.S. Uh, to drop this case, even as of, as of last year, there was another uh, hearing. Is there any reason if, if you're, you're not guilty and it wasn't you that you've spent so much money on hiring lawyers to tell the U.S. to drop this case? I think that uh, your question is unfair to me, and uh, I will answer you in this way again. When I got this problem in England, it wasn't, it wasn't by the instruction of the England British authority. It was by the instruction of U.S. government. And the U.S. government appointed a prosecutor. For four years, I clear my name. I was discharged by two different courts. Now, I came back to Nigeria. The U.S. government did not appeal for good 11 years. They never, since that 11 years, they never asked for my own, they never asked for another extradition because they have already exhausted all their rights in Britain. Now, I enter into politics, and the people, I was the one that carried the documents of this case. I wrote a report. I gave to many people about what has happened to me in the past. If my opponent, they are using that against me. My sister, since 2003, I won this case. American government, they know me. They know that I'm in Nigeria. They know that I'm a public figure. They know that I have Benenua nationality. They know that my wife is from Kutonu. They know everything about me. I'm a public figure. It is normal. If the U.S. government did not drop the case in America, it is normal for me to appoint a lawyer, which of course I did, to go and fight the case for me in order for me to be able to clear my name. I see. To be able to clear my name over there. I've cleared it in London. There is no reason. So far, I've obtained that two judgment. There is no reason for them to keep that case there. I do not have nothing to do with their indictment. It is normal for me to fight. Tomorrow, I will fight. Next tomorrow, I will fight. I will continue to fight it until the justice will be done. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Prince Kashamu, for taking time out to, for us to hear your side of this story. Thank you. All right, viewers, that has been Prince Buruji Kashamu uh, giving us his side of the story in this ongoing case. And uh, stay tuned. We have much more to come.